Welcome, everyone. This is Dawn Mathis, and this is To Your Greatness. Today, I have a guest who's a personal friend of mine and uh, a business associate. Her name is Andrea Bazwa, and she's the owner of Ever Human. So Andrea is a human resilience activator, which means she works with individuals to identify and dismantle the practical and personal barriers that keep people from thriving in our ever-accelerating future. She serves as a business consultant through her company, Ever Human, as the technology columnist for Cultures Magazine, and as a certified essential oils educator and wellness consultant. She lives in Fort Collins with her French husband and her culturally fluid son. So welcome, Andrea. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much, Don. I'm very excited to be here as well. Great. Well, I have some questions uh, for you for the purposes of, of letting our audience know a little bit more about you and what you do. So first of all, can you tell us what you were doing or what your work or career was before you started Ever Human? Absolutely. So it's been an interesting journey for me. The um, career that I had just before starting my business in 2016 was in higher ed administration. So I had spent 13, over 13 years uh, working in colleges and universities on the administration side. So not teaching, but working with admissions and with Mm -hmm. um, the ID office and with pre-collegiate programs, so all the different programs that help students be successful um, before and during their college education. So I really thought that was going to be my lifelong career. I went on to get a master's degree in the topic. Uh, I really, yeah, I thought that this was going to be the one and only career that I had. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, things started to change at one point. So... So did you have some longing or, or some discontent or how did you decide to, to even strike out on your own from that career? Yeah, such a great question. Um, while I was at my last institution, I was uh, working in a job and I really loved the work. I was helping first generation and low income students to get to college and the work was mm, deeply wow. meaningful to me and I really enjoyed it. But the problem is I had um, a difficult boss and it was really untenable for me. It was something that I just couldn't um, kind of overcome. And uh, so I started looking for a different job at the same institution. And so the job that I eventually found um, was, I'm going to call it a J-O-B, the kind of a job that, you know, you take and you just sort of clock in and clock out. I, I didn't mm. find a lot of meaning in the work. And beyond that, I just started to have this, this feeling that I wasn't sure if the work that I was doing was really helping or hurting students. And why I say that is because college education over the last decade or more has really become so incredibly expensive for students that, uh, for a lot of students who don't really know what they want to do with their life, and they just say, well, I know I'm supposed to go to college, so I'm going to go. And they take out enormous loans to, you know, start a program and may or may not have much direction while they're there. And a lot of times drop out before they even reach that degree and they're saddled with all this debt. So I was yeah. seeing that over and over and was really concerned so I started to lose my faith in my purpose and in the mission of, of higher ed as it stood, you know, in the way that it was offered at the time. And about that same time, I was just noticing uh, a lot of people were having troubles with technology. So I, I'm, my mom was the main inspiration for the work that I got into. Uh, she is in her 60s. And uh, I was just noticing that even though she had an iPhone, she had a computer, she had a successful career as a social worker, um, but essentially she decided to take an early retirement. She called it an early retirement, but it wasn't because she wanted to go relax and have fun. It was because the technology in her job became mm. so such a point of stress in her life that she just couldn't take it anymore. She just felt yeah. overwhelmed by the constant 
um, need to learn more and do more and, you know, get the latest training on the latest, you know, Excel spreadsheets, all of that. It was just, it was too much for her. It was very stressful. So she voluntarily cut her career short and it, it bothered me so much because as a social worker, she was so effective at her work mm-hmm. and helped so many people. And yeah. so I, it bothered me that that was the reason that she cut her career short. And I just looked around and realized that she wasn't alone. There was really a lot yeah. of people who struggled so much with technology and uh, to the point where they weren't able to do what they wanted to do in their careers or in their life. Yeah, I, I, I fit that bill will, along with your with your mom. Um, can I share <laughs> my my little funny thing about me and technology? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, so when I had to start using a computer, when I first um, was in my first career that I had to use a computer, um, someone was trying to teach me how to turn it on and do all those things. And uh, I actually thought Amazon.com was a lesbian website. So um, <laughs> that's, that's where I started. So, uh, and, <laughs> and I've also heard it said, Andy, and maybe, and maybe you can, um, you can verify this, is that about every two years, what we know about technology, Technology. Heck, even our phones, um, even sooner than that, everything is, is obsolete and you have to learn almost a whole new language. And, and that in and of itself, for those of us who use technology only because we have to, um, that that's extremely stressful. It sounds like that's that's where your mom was at. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think for for the people who grew up starting with Windows 95 or even before that, you know, using uh, DOS matrix and things like that, you know, just the the beginnings of the computer era, it really was a you had to use a manual and learn step mm. by step and follow that manual pretty closely and read this the instructions and put exactly the right characters. That was how a person learned. And then after that, it was, you know, they had the four dummies series of books and that's really how oh, people yeah. continue to learn. But as you said, with technology turning over so quickly, it's not the way that we need to learn now. And I think that's one right. of the biggest problems for people who feel stuck in the digital age is they don't know how to learn technology anymore. Right. Uh, there, there's a quote by um, the Dalai Lama and he said, there's more to life than just its speed. And I think he was probably talking about technology. So, so Andrea, um, so tell us about your, about your company and how it can help those of us who'd uh, rather not be super techie, um, you know, that sort of thing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, so really whenever humans started in 2016, the goal Mm -hmm. was to help older adults. And, you know, I, that term is so difficult for me. It's hard to say, how do you define the, the, my demographic, but it's really people who I would call, um, digital immigrants. So if you think about it, a digital, Ooh, I like that better than native, the age thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because it really <laughs> isn't about a number. It truly isn't. Right. So, but it's for people who feel like learning technology feels like a foreign language where, you know, they didn't grow up using technology, or at least the technology we're using today, it just feels foreign. So for those people, what I did was really help them learn how to learn technology. And there's really, Mm. I identified four different kind of quadrants of people uh, who try to learn technology and the one that works really well. So I'm going to go over this really quickly for your listeners, because I think this could help them. So for hopefully some of your listeners have heard of Carol Dweck's work of a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Have you heard about that, Dawn? I'm not sure if you have. No, I have not. A fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. So this is not my my work. This is Carol Dweck. She was a researcher on mindset. And she identified that people who have a fixed mindset really believe that in order to learn something, you have to go step by step. You have to go by the book, that there's a right way and a wrong way, and everything's pretty black and white, including their own knowledge and and their own abilities. So people who have Mm -hmm. a fixed mindset believe that they were born with certain capabilities and and level of intelligence, and that's not really going to change. So there's not much they can do about about that. People with a growth mindset, on the other hand, understand that the brain is plastic. So anyone can learn anything with effort and things can change over time. And like you were saying before, 
um, the ways that we learn change over time. And so people with a growth mindset believe that um, they, they know that there's a lot of gray area. Not every, there's not always the right answer and a wrong answer or the right way and the wrong way. So if you think about that, um, imagine that's the x-axis, like the, the horizontal line. Now put a, a, a vertical line, the y-axis, imagine a high self-esteem and a low self-esteem or a high self-concept and low self-concept. So your self-concept is really a collection of beliefs about yourself. It's the kind of labels we, we use to describe ourselves. I'm a good dancer. I'm a bad singer. I'm a good friend. I'm a terrible housekeeper. You know, it's these judgments we make on ourselves. And if that collection of stories is very positive, you can imagine that's a high self-concept. So imagine that vertical line very high on that. If you have kind of low opinion about yourself, that's low on that on that Y axis. So now we put four different people on there. So on the bottom, a low self-concept and a fixed mindset, we have the curmudgeon. And this is the person who says, nope, I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. If I want to learn, I have to start from Windows 95 and work my way up. And I'm too tired. I'm, I'm not able to do that. I'm just not doing it. I'm just saying no, and no one's going to make me. So that's a really, that's a really difficult place to be. That person is saying no, mostly because they believe they don't believe that they can. And it's just yeah. too intimidating and too um, painful to the ego to imagine doing something with technology. So imagine a person who has a fixed mindset, but uh, does believe in themselves. So this person has a high self-concept. So this person is called the manual reader. The manual reader is the one who has every four dummies book on their shelf and they are determined. They, they want to do it. They want to do their best. They enroll in the classes, they read the books and they say, I, I can do it if I try hard enough. But actually, as I said before, learning technology by the book doesn't work anymore because it changes so frequently. So that's just the, you know, that person, the, the manual reader becomes really frustrated Okay, third person. Third person has a low self-concept, but a um, growth mindset. So this person knows not everything is black and white, but they don't believe in themselves very much. This is the wallflower. So this is the person who says, you know, I see my neighbor doing it. I see my friend doing it. I just can't do it. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. I didn't grow up with it. You know, it's a lot of excuses about who they are, that the story they have about themselves is really the thing that's preventing them from learning. So if you can imagine what's the best way to learn, it's the fourth one. So the fourth one is the chef. This is the person with a growth mindset and a high self-concept. So if you imagine, how does a chef learn to cook? Well, you start by something really simple, like making toast, scrambled eggs, spaghetti, you know, nothing fancy. You just kind of get in there and try a few things. And at the very beginning, you might use a recipe and you might follow step by step. But over time, you might say, hmm, I wonder if I try a little smoked paprika in those eggs. You know, maybe I can make pasta sauce from scratch. I'm going to try again. So, well, what happens the time that you burn the food? Do you say to yourself, see, I'm never <laughs> cooking again. That's never going to happen. I'm the worst. That's the end of cooking. No, you say, oh, you know, I think I turned it up too high. Next time I'll turn it down lower. No big deal. And you move on. So what I try to teach my clients with ever human about, you know, learning technology is that you have to treat it the way you treat cooking. You just try, just play. The, the stakes are really low. If you push a button and it doesn't work, it's no big deal. And it's usually not going to break. It's, you're not going to break anything. So just push buttons, play, see what happens. If it didn't work, you can go back, you can refresh, you can shut off your computer and try again, you know, but it doesn't mean that you aren't learning while you're, you know, playing and trying, you're learning that whole time and you're getting better. So that's really in a nutshell. That's what I train people to do is to realize it isn't their age or their skill set; It's their mindset. That is the main reason they may or may not be enjoying the digital age. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about mindset because that is definitely one of the big topics and the keys to to transformation and life coaching. It is the mindset. That's where it all starts. And um, so I think I used to be one of those. I don't know, the curmudgeon. Is that the worst one, Andrea? Wasn't that the worst one? 
<laughs> yeah, yes. And I, I feel like you were never that one, but yes. <laughs> well, where would you have put me when you and I first started working together? I would have put you in the category of the wallflower. So I think that you knew that it was possible to learn, but just mm. had a collection of stories that said, it's just not my place. I'm, I'm just not one of those people who's very good with technology. And I would say there's lots of people who are in that category. So they realize that people are out there using technology. And what's so interesting, and I'm going to go back to my mom on this. My mom, to this day, she says things to me like, oh, I'm really bad at texting or, um, you know, can you do this for me? I just don't know how. And she has the latest iPhone. She knows how to use WhatsApp. She recently got TikTok. I don't even have TikTok. And she recently got TikTok and she's using that and having a blast. So those, those stories can be so powerful and can keep us stuck even when we surpass the story. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Well, it was a long time ago that I thought that about Amazon.com. I know a heck of a lot better now. Um, and I just, wanna, I just want to um, tell you that you have helped me to actually enjoy learning about technology and to also be okay um, with learning more and also handing it off, knowing that um, I have strengths that I that I want to develop and the technology part, uh, like I said, I am learning to enjoy it. I wouldn't say I'm a chef right now. I might be a sous chef. Like I'm chopping up the stuff. I'm not where I feel like I want to dabble and push <laughs> buttons and things all by myself. Um, but, um, uh, it's been a journey for me and, and, and me changing my mindset so that I can be impeccable with my clients has, has been amazing. And, um, I think I've come a long way in the, in the last several months that you and I've been working together, Andy, would you agree? Oh my gosh. I, for me, you are the poster child for, yes, <laughs> you are just so, um, you are such a great example for the wow. person who has taken taken their mindset and leveraged it to be able to be successful with technology. So when you and I met, you were not um, you were not really comfortable using a lot of the technology. But you have a podcast now. I don't have a podcast. I know, right? <laughs> you have a podcast. You um, are running a community on Mighty Network, which is a really wonderful community based platform. Um, I mean, so many things that you're able to do that, that I think a lot of people would be intimidated to do, but you've really bravely stepped into that. So I really applaud you for that. Well, well, thank you. Um, one of the things that I've learned from getting my own coaching is you do it afraid, you know, you don't, you don't just wait until you're not going to be scared. Um, you just do it afraid. Um, I think Buzz Aldrin, one of the um, one of the uh, first astronauts, um, said that he didn't believe in courage; he believed in training. So um, I just think that I've been trained up um, in several ways by your help, Andy and Andrea, and um, just it it's it it's like building blocks, and um, I, I'm gaining confidence in in what I'm learning through you. So um, I. I really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. It's been an honor to, to walk beside you. All right. Wow. Wow. Andrea, this has been very, very helpful. Um, so what can we, what can you share with us that maybe we haven't talked about yet that would be beneficial to our listeners? It's a great question. Uh, you know, I will say that I recently read a book by Dan Sullivan called Who Not How, and uh, it's coming to mind right now because I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they try to get better at, at technology or anything else is asking, how do I do this? It's just the, the question that we ask first. It seems like the most logical question, how can I do this? But a lot of times that question makes us feel um, frozen with fear just keeps us kind of stuck. It's not a very productive question. A better question to ask, and the question that I've really had, you know, I think my clients have asked is who can help me do this? And uh, 
a lot of times we need help. We need some support because maybe there's things that we aren't seeing that somebody else from an outside perspective can see and help us with. So uh, the clients that I've worked with, I think are really grateful that I was the who in their life that could help them see things differently and see themselves differently. And for most of my clients, I was able to help them, you know, a handful of times and then they've taken it from there and been able to continue enjoying their te technological life, their digital life. So I would say for people who are listening, I would want them to ask that question, who can help me? You know, if, if it's transformation that they're seeking, if they want a life transformation, I think that, you know, being able to reach out to the right who, um, hint, hint, I think, Don, you are definitely the right who <laughs> for helping them, you know, to well, experience some transformation in their life. But I've seen you at work and I think you've helped so many people to really um, uncover some big barriers in their lives and and be able to achieve more than they thought was that they thought were was possible. So um, mm -hmm. asking who, not how, I think is really the right way to go. Absolutely, absolutely, and and uh, yeah, we talk about that in life coaching too. That uh, the quality of life you have is determined by the quality of questions you ask. So who, and and also what. What can I do to, to help myself learn more and empower myself in my technology journey? Um, yeah, it's, um, wow, listening to you talk about it, it, it actually sounds fun. So, <laughs> I think it's fun. I, <laughs> and it, think, it has yeah. been fun with you, um, Andrea. You, you make it fun and, and uh, enlightening and you're very encouraging. Uh, you're very patient. So anybody who needs those qualities uh, in someone who can help them with technology, um, Andrea is amazing. Thank you so much. So, Andrea, I just wanted to thank you for your time today. And um, everybody, this is Andrea Bazois from ever human the owner of ever human and if you look in the show notes um you can you can find out how to reach her if if you want to know more about what she does and how she can help you um or your team at work so this is to your greatness with dawn mathis and thanks for joining us today and we will see you next time <laughs>